Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to be performing a MANOVA in SPSS. Now, a MANOVA is probably one of the most complicated statistical analyses that can be performed in SPSS, and I suspect uh, a lot of people approach doing a MANOVA with a certain amount of trepidation. Uh, I'm going to create this video in such a way to try to allay that uh, trepidation because I'm going to go through the main features of a MANOVA and explain them uh, in as easy a way as I can. Now I'm also going to be doing two different types of MANOVAs in here. Now they're both going to be between groups designs. I'm actually going to be analyzing the same exact data with the same variables, but I'm going to do the MANOVA in two different ways. Now in the first way is probably the most common way that people do a MANOVA, and that's in the context of doing a MANOVA to help protect against making a series of type 1 errors. So people have several dependent variables and they want to analyze those using a series of ANOVAs and t-tests, but before they can do that, they feel like they have to do a MANOVA first, and if they get statistically significant effect from the MANOVA, then that allows them to carry on the more focused uh, comparisons. That's probably the most common way that MANOVA is used, but it's also probably the wrong way of uh, using the MANOVA. In my opinion, as well as others, uh, the MANOVA can be used in a much more insightful way uh, by uh, discerning the nature of the uh, differences between the groups with respect to the dependent variables. And that takes more analyses and it takes more interpretation, but it is not impossible uh, for the average person to do this. So let's get into it. So I, I, now I will say, if people who want to carry on to the more interesting and sophisticated way of using MANOVA, well then you can just carry on through the whole series. But for those of you who just want to know the basics of the most common way that people use MANOVA, then you only have to follow for the first half of this video series. Because I'm going to do that way first. So here are the data that I'm analyzing. I've got nine dependent variables here, and they're all intelligence subscales. So three verbal intelligence subscales, three memory subscales, and three spatial intelligence subscales. And I've got one independent variable with three levels, and it's education level. I've got undergraduates, master's students, and PhD students. And the hypothesis is that these three groups uh, will differ in intelligence and presumably PhD students are going to be the smartest, master's students are going to be the second smartest, and, edu and um, university undergrads are going to be the least intelligent, although they're supposedly uh, going to be you know, above average. Uh, anyway, uh, so to do this analysis we've got this, the nine dependent variables that we're going to have to combine into the MANOVA and hopefully if we get significant effect, a significant effect on that using the first approach to doing MANOVA we will then carry on to do a series of one-way ANOVAs and for those one-way ANOVAs that are significant we carry on to do a series of t-tests or post-hoc testing. So here is how you do the first way of doing a MANOVA. Go into Analyze, General Linear Model and multivariate. And then take all your dependent variables and put them into the dependent variable list and put education into fixed factors or whatever the name is for your independent variable. This is only a one-way MANOVA. I'm not doing a factorial uh, design where you might have two independent variables or more. This is really just a simple, simpler case. Go into options and as a minimum, you'll need descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity tests. Now, some people also uh, look at power. In my opinion, that's not very informative uh, in this context, but people do it, and I'll, I'll click on it. The other options are relatively esoteric, and uh, arguably you won't get a huge amount of information. Because I want to keep this video to a manageable size, I'm not going to go into any detail with these other options. But these, these four main options, you should get enough information for your purposes the vast majority of the time. Now for post hocs, in case I get a statistically significant MANOVA effect, I'm going to put my independent variable, because uh, I want to test the, the differences between means, the comparisons between undergrads and masters, and masters versus PhD, and PhD versus undergrads across all dependent variables that are statistically significant, I'm going to choose LSD because if you've convinced yourself that the MANOVA protects you from committing a 